In the previous video, we discussed about the overview of photosynthesis, why we had a holistic approach towards the process of photosynthesis. Now in here, we are going to discuss about the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis in detail. As the name states, these are the reactions that are dependent on light. To be precise, it's the energy of photons that is used to drive these reactions. First of all, let's see the site of reactions. It's the type of plastid named as chloroplast where the photosynthesis occurs. And inside the chloroplast, we have a double membrane structures called thylakoids. And it's in these thylakoid membranes where light dependent reactions occurs. Basically, the membrane of thylakoids are embedded with specialized light absorbing proteins called photosystems, which makes them the site for these kind of reactions. Before we jump towards the reactions, let's see the different processes that take place in the light dependent reactions in a sequential manner. We see the first thing that happens in chlorophyll molecules is the photo excitation of electrons. When the light energy is absorbed by photosystem 2 molecules, it excites the electrons and finally ejects the electrons from reaction center of photosystem 2. The second reaction that occurs here is the photolysis of water molecules. In which we see it stabilizes the photosystem 2 by providing the lost electron. How it stabilizes it? It's by the absorption of light energy. The water molecule gets split into oxygen molecule and gives off electrons and protons. Then we see we have electron transport chain. In electron transport chain, the ejected electron from photosystem 2 goes through the membrane via electron carriers. The function of ETC is to pump the protons into lumen from stroma. The second thing is that it reduces the NADP positive into NADPH. And finally, the last reaction to occur in light dependent reaction is the ATP generation, where the ATP molecules are getting generated by the process of chemiosmosis. Now let's see a detailed outlook of light dependent reactions. In the structure of thylakoid membrane, we see it has got different types of protein molecules. First, it has got photosystem 2 molecule, also called as P680 molecule, where P stands for pigment and 680 is the maximum absorbing wavelength of this molecule, that is 680 nanometer in visible spectrum. Then we have different mobile electron carriers. Plastoquinone molecule is the first electron carrier. After that, we have cytochrome B6F complex, and finally, we have plastocyanin. Then again, we have light harvesting molecule by the name of photosystem first, also called as P700, as its maximum absorbing wavelength capacity is 700 nanometer in visible spectrum. And for the ATP generation process, the thylakoid membrane has got ATP synthase molecule, as shown in the diagram. The first event that takes place is the absorption of light energy by photosystem 2. It's when the photons hit the antenna pigment molecules and excites the electron in the antenna molecules, which transfers the energy towards the reaction center via resonance transfer. And in the reaction center, the electron gets from ground state to the excited state. The light energy also drives the photolysis of water into oxygen electrons and protons. The oxygen is evolved through oxygen evolving complex. The electrons that we get from the photolysis of water stabilizes the photosystem 2 molecule by compensating for the lost electrons. After that, we see the electrons just ejected from the photosystem 2 molecule are received by plastoquinone molecule. And this plastoquinone molecule gets reduced when it accepts two electrons from photosystem 2 and two hydrogen cations from stroma of the chloroplast thereby forming plastoquinol PQS2. But the plastoquinol further delivers the electrons towards the cytochrome B6F complex, which mediates the pumping of protons into lumen by the energy of excited electrons. Now at that time, the electron is again at the lower energy state, as it has lost its energy for pumping protons from stroma into the lumen. And after that, this Low energy electron is carried towards another photosystem called as photosystem 2 by the mobile carrier protein called plastocyanin. Here in the photosystem 1, the electron has low energy and it gains energy when the photosystem 1 molecule absorbs the light energy again. 
and excites the electron back to the higher energy state. And finally, the energized electron is transported to NADP plus by pyridoxin. And in presence of pyridoxin NADP reductase, the electron is received by NADP plus and gets reduced to NADPH. So we have now NADPH produced from the light dependent reaction. Now from the light dependent reaction, we need another molecule that's ATP molecule for another process of photosynthesis. That's Calvin cycle. So for the generation of ATP, we see we have created the high concentration of protons in the lumen side of thylakoid. This creates electrochemical gradient. And by this, the protons move down their electrochemical gradient. That means the protons will move from lumen towards the stroma. And this movement of protons is mediated via ATP synthase, a channel protein which uses the proton motive force to generate ATP from ADP through the process of chemiosmosis. In this way, ATP is generated. Now we have both molecules that's NADPH and the ATP molecule for the another part of photosynthesis that is Calvin cycle. So this is how the light dependent reaction occurs inside the thylakoid membrane. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.